For thousands of years, this land was animated by the stories and cultures of indigenous peoples. For many years, those stories were suppressed. But there is a new generation using new technology, ensuring these stories flourish once again. Our first guest is First Nations ancestry. He grew up on a boat in False Creek, and has explored the coast with his father fishing for many years. For years, he produced the award-winning show that introduced many Canadians to Aboriginal issues and culture through the CTV show, First Stories. By telling the stories of Indigenous people, he plays a key role in the vital effort of reconciliation. Please welcome Peter Romer. For, uh, to understand Canada, you truly really need to understand its Indigenous people, its culture, and its history. As documentarians, we're on the front lines of telling our stories and bringing it to the world for the world to see. I was recently in the tundra documenting the Bayesiata First Nations, our people of the Willow. The people of the Willow are caribou, a hunting tribe. And we were there to, to show the world about their culture and their place. Documentarians like myself have a vital role to bring these stories to the mainstream world. Many stories that were, have been untold for, for years. I was 30 miles above the Arctic Circle, deep, deep in the tundra of the Northwest Territories. We were camped out. I call it the, the Serengeti of the North. We were on the edge of the Barren Lands. 80% of the Bayesiata First Nations diet comes from the caribou. And they dry their meat to preserve it for the winter. Eight-year-olds are taught how to hunt by age eight, and they know how to survive off the land. This one kid here told me, taught me how to pick berries and kindly reminded that I was standing on top of them. Old corrals snake along the landscape, reminding us of the time when the Bayesiata First Nations used to corral them into pens and spear them, when the caribou used to run by the thousands. Teepees still stand there, they're 500 years old, locked in time due to the dry climate. The Bayesiata are documenting and mapping their traditional areas. It's unbelievable that the, the knowledge keepers can, on these maps can name every river, every place, every trail, every lake, all from, from, all from the memories that they have. But it was a long way from fishing on the West Coast. You see, I grew up on a boat, commercial fishing, between Cape Scott and Brooks Peninsula with uh, my Dutch father and a cat named Whiskers, who we call Whiskey. So every time we would, we would lose Whiskey on the dock, I'd be like, and here's a nine-year-old going, Whiskey, Whiskey, where's my Whiskey? <laughs> no wonder I had strange looks. My mother is Nishka. She came from King Goleth. And King Goleth is place of skulls. This is in northern BC, near, near a place, near, just near Terrace, or the Nass River. It's called Place of Skulls because when the Europeans anchored in our shores, they, they dropped off a case, case of rum to get our people drunk. So we put their heads on sticks. <laughs> they didn't do that again. <laughs> My father is Frisian. He's Dutch from northern Holland. He was born in a little island called Amland, in a captain's house. My, uh, my grandfather was the captain of big ships, and one of his last ship was called My Lady. And um, we come from a pub lodge called the Dree Roamers. 
which, which is uh, three, it was, it was a pub lodge built in the 1600s. And a Romer means a, actually like a glass, a, a drink. And uh, maybe that explains a lot. So when the fishing collapsed, I got sponsored by the Fishermen's Union to, um, to uh, take a trade. So I, I chose filmmaking. And I really wanted to tell our people's stories because I heard misconception and construed ideas about First Nation people along the coast. And I quickly got a practicum at a show called First Story. It was an Aboriginal current affairs series telling stories about art, culture, and politics. And the fact that it was on CTV, it was on a mainstream network, I felt we were breaking barriers. Barriers. Here's a show, indigenous people telling stories from an indigenous perspective. And we were telling stories that mainstream weren't covering. I was proud to be there. We were told that we wouldn't last. We lasted 16 years. It was the longest running Aboriginal current affairs series in Western Canada. But over the time of, uh, with, with First Story, over the years, there's two stories that really stuck out to me. One was on the Haida repatriation, in, where I got to go to New York, repatriate or, um, me, with the Haida, got to go behind the scenes of the American Museum of Natural History, and witness them taking re their remains back to Haida Gwaii. And you see, thousands of remains stay locked in drawers all around the world and the Haida wanted to bring their ancestors home. France, Franz Boas, and David Newcomb, they were the early anthropologists here on the coast, but they were stealing our remains from caves and mortuary poles and selling them for $10 to $5, $5 for a skull, $10 for a femur. But I was there to tell this story and bring that to the people. My work brought me overseas to a place to, to Japan, where I got to document an indigenous people of Japan called the Ainu. And they too were persecuted. Actually, the government adopted the same blue book that, of, about how to colonize an Indian. And not many people knew about it. A lot of Japanese people were actually afraid to admit that they were Ainu. I wanted to tell that story. So back in the tundra, I was just amazed at the strength and resilience of these people. Documenting the stories for the future generations in a format that they could understand. You see, we're not relics in a museum. We're alive, we're thriving, we're here, and we are now. Thank you. <laughs>